For more than 3,000 years, the gold mask of Pharaoh Tutankhamun stayed hidden in the Valley of the Kings. This artifact, which stands about 21 inches tall, shows how skilled and artistic the ancient Egyptians were. But nobody expected that x-rays would reveal its biggest secret. King Tut was the last ruler of his family during the 18th dynasty. He took the throne at just 9 years old, but ruled for only 10 years before he passed away unexpectedly. If we're being honest, back in ancient Egypt, he was mostly forgotten by the rulers who came after him. His tomb wasn't a big deal for them, so much so that even the grave robbers forgot about him. It might sound a bit sad, but the truth is that it was actually great news for us. Since his tomb was practically forgotten, it ended up being perfectly preserved. While the other tombs in the Valley of the Kings were looted, his remained sealed and untouched. So when it was discovered back in 1922, it had over 5,000 precious objects inside. That made Tutankhamun basically an instant celebrity and one of the best-known pharaohs nowadays. Among the treasures was the most stunning piece, his golden mask. This mask is said to be an exact image of the king's face, or at least it was supposed to be, but we'll get to that later. The purpose of this accurate representation of his face was to make sure that his soul would recognize him in the afterlife and return to his mummified body. In ancient Egyptian beliefs, this would allow him to continue living in the afterlife. The details of the mask clearly looked incredibly difficult to create. But people didn't realize how complex it truly was until many years later. The first x-rays of the mask were taken in 1967. Back then, the main reason for these scans was practical – conservation. The mask was heading to Paris for an exhibition, and it was the first time it had ever left Paris. This would help them keep track of any changes during the exhibit. Plus, the images could give clues about how the mask was made. But back then, they probably didn't fully realize just how complex its construction was. I mean, Egyptian goldsmiths didn't use modern soldering techniques. So how did they make this mask? New x-rays taken in 2007 gave us some answers. It turned out the Egyptians didn't use pure gold, which is 24 carats. The mask was actually made of 23 karat gold meaning it was mixed with another material. So specialists discovered that the gold sheets contained a small amount of copper, a reddish-brown metal. This was likely done to make the material more flexible and easier to shape. They would then shape the gold sheets by heating and hammering them over and over again. But there was one more secret inside the mask that wasn't discovered until 2015. The year before, the staff at Cairo's Egyptian Museum were working on the mask display when the long beard of the mask accidentally got knocked off. Another theory is that the beard had become loose over time and just fell off. Either way, the fact that King Tut's beard came off caused a lot of stress. After all, we're talking about one of Cairo's biggest tourist attractions, so the experts had to fix the problem quickly. The restoration process started with a detailed recording of the mask condition. To do this, they had to take a full three-dimensional scan of the artifact. And, by accident, they found something very interesting in the mask. Inside the royal beard, there is a gold tube, an intriguing structure that the Egyptians likely used to attach the beard to the rest of the mask. And that proved, once again, that the process of making this mask was even more complex than experts thought. But the mysteries don't stop there. Remember how we mentioned that the mask was thought to perfectly represent King Tutankhamun's face? Well, that might not be entirely true. Some popular theories suggest the mask was never meant for him and was actually made for someone else. A study published in 2015 suggested the mask was originally made for a female pharaoh, his supposed stepmother, the famous and beautiful Egyptian queen Nefertiti. The biggest clue comes from an inscription on the mask. At first glance, it seemed to belong to Tutankhamun. But after a close examination, researchers noted that something else was actually written underneath King Tut's name. The royal name stamp seems to have been altered, and originally, it had something written on it that translates to Queen Nefertiti. 
There is another feature of King Tut's golden mask that was overlooked for years, which adds even more mystery. As we mentioned earlier, experts believe he wasn't respected much by the pharaohs who came after him. And one of the clues that made archaeologists think this is the pierced ears on the mask. Some researchers believe that King Tutankhamun wouldn't have worn earrings after he was a kid. So, according to their theory, by the time he passed away at 18, he shouldn't have been represented with pierced ears. This could also support the idea that the mask originally belonged to Nefertiti, or maybe to someone who wasn't even connected to King Tut. But the mask isn't the only source of mystery. In fact, his whole tomb is full of puzzles. Recently, historians found a sign that the place where King Tut was supposed to be buried was changed at the last minute. For years, experts wonder why a pharaoh who ruled for nine years ended up in such a simple tomb. When compared to the grandeur of other pharaohs' tombs, his tomb seemed, well, a bit plain. The idea that a king like Tutankhamun would have such an unremarkable resting place just doesn't match up with the power and importance he must have had in ancient Egypt. So what happened? Well, apparently, this might have something to do with his successor, Pharaoh I. After King Tutankhamun passed away, researchers believe that I made sure to erase him from Egypt's history. So one theory suggests that he was probably behind the quick decision to place King Tut's body in a smaller, less impressive tomb. When experts looked at Ai's own tomb, they found something interesting. There is a large wall covered in painted baboons. This is the same type of artwork found in Tutankhamun's tomb. It seems like the same person might have chosen the artwork for both tombs. Now, the design and decoration of the two tombs are almost identical, suggesting there was a shared hand behind both. But there is one key difference. Ai's tomb is fit for a king. It's much bigger and more impressive, even though the style and artwork are similar to what you see in Tutankhamun's tomb. So the theory suggests that I decided what went into both tombs. Since Tut passed away unexpectedly at a young age, his grand tomb wasn't finished in time. Normally pharaohs start building their tombs while they're still alive to make sure everything is perfect. But Tut passed away when he was just 18, so there wasn't enough time. I may have taken advantage of the situation, ordering a smaller tomb for Tut and keeping a larger one for himself. Experts believe this theory explains why Tutankhamun's tomb is so simple and how I managed to wipe his memory from history so easily. But in the end, the story of King Tut's mask and tomb is full of mystery and intrigue. Each new discovery sheds more light on what really happened all those years ago. But one thing is for sure, the secrets of ancient Egypt still have much to reveal, and King Tutankhamun will continue to fascinate people for years to come. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.